Are the creeds of early Christianity necessary? Welcome to the video that's going to get me in trouble with a whole lot of people. This is People with a Free Gift, where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. We're glad that you joined us. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button and enable notifications so that you won't miss a single video. We release videos having to do with apologetics and cults and the Bible several times a week. So let's go ahead and jump into the topic of the day. A few weeks ago, I released a video that was called What Makes a Christian? What Makes a Cult? And I was talking out of my recent book, Sharing Jesus with the Cults, available on Amazon as paperback or Kindle. And in that video, I talked about the core doctrines of Christianity, the non-negotiable fundamentals. What does a person have to believe in order to be considered a Christian? So we talked about that there is one God, that Jesus is God, that Jesus is man, that Jesus died for our sins and rose again from the dead, and that resurrection was physical and bodily, and you must believe in the gospel that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and not by works, lest any man should boast, and that gospel is that Jesus died for our sins and rose again from the dead. That is the Christian faith. That is the faith once delivered to the saints, as Jude says, that is the gospel, and which Paul says, if anyone preaches another gospel, let him be accursed, even if it's an angel from heaven. If somebody comes to you with a different God, different Jesus, different gospel, then don't listen to them, okay? So we talked about that, and it was amazing to me that the responses and the rebuttals, yes, I got some on the Salvation by Works stuff, from Mormons, and I got some stuff on, you know, the nature of God from Mormons, and especially, you know, like, uh, but the thing that surprised me was my the response I got from Christians, and it brought something to the surface for me that really I've been thinking about for a long time, and that is that as Christians, we don't go to the Bible as our source of authority. We go to the creeds. I'm a part of a ministerial association here in Roundup. That's right. I'm a pastor of a church here in Roundup, Montana. And there's a ministerial association. Well, years ago, they had problems because, you know, like the LDS and the JWs, and there was like floods and different fires and stuff like that, that those groups were instrumental and very helpful in, in helping out with the recovery efforts. And no doubt about it, they are incredibly helpful, especially the LDS church. But aftermath was that those groups were offended that they were not allowed to join the ministerial association, which is supposed to be a fellowship of pastors and leaders of the Christian churches in town. So what did that ministerial association choose to do? They chose to try and find something that would keep those groups out and yet uh, unite at all the Christian groups that they wanted to have in. And guess what they chose? The Nicene Creed. You had to believe in the Nicene Creed in order to join this group. Well, guess what? And I don't know if you've really thought about this or not, but if you take the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, and the Athanasian Creed, the three biggest creeds that uh, Christians, all Christians seem to agree on, and we're going to get to the ones that came after that in a second uh, and how that relates to this question. But in the night, in, if you take those three creeds, nothing is said about salvation by grace alone through faith alone. And yes, a lot of say, things are said about the divinity of Jesus and even the inclusion later in the Athanasian Creed of the Holy Spirit and in part of the Trinity, one God and three persons, and we condemned Arius and we condemned Gnosticism, and we condemned Sabellianism, and we condemned all these isms. But what we need to realize is that there's a certain level in which uh, all of these groups that point back to the Council of Nicaea and they say, well, you know, Constantine did a whole lot of squirrely stuff. They're not right in their history, okay? 
Aryans didn't get stomped out politically, okay? They actually became the political power after that. Um, it's actually the other way around. I have another video on that that you want to check out what really happened in the Council of Nicaea. But what we have to acknowledge is that the council was called by Constantine. And not many of the bishops of the churches showed up. Probably because they're thinking, what, guy, what power, what right does this guy have to say anything about Christianity? And Constantine was not trying to dictate what happened at the council. What he wanted was peace. He wanted unity in his kingdom. It bothered him that there were camps of Christians. And most importantly, it bothered him, and it should have, that those Christians were killing each other. Okay? Christianity and politics have never worked well with one another, but that's a whole nother video, okay? So as a result, they came together and they started talking about trying to make sense of, and granted, they were trying to make sense out of, what does the Bible say about the nature and person of Jesus Christ? And it came down to the one iota, you know, homo isius, homo isius, heterosius, okay? And all of you are going, huh? And the reason is those are philosophical terms, okay? They were using language of nature and essence and person in order to try and describe what the Bible says. A better question, I feel, that the Council of Nicaea would have had been if... Uh, Athanasius, or I think it was Alexander who represented the, the, um, the Orthodox side, or what became the Orthodox side, and he should have turned to Arius and asked him a simple question. Do you believe that there is one God? Based off of Isaiah 43.10, Isaiah 44.6, the Ten Commandments, have no other gods before me, okay? There's only one God. Arius would have said yes, okay? He's kind of like the precursors to the Jehovah's Witnesses. He would have said yes. If they would have said, Arius, do you believe that Jesus is God? I don't know what he would have said to that. Because his whole beef was that Jesus was the first creation of God, that God created everything else through him. Okay, so if they would have asked him, do you believe that he and the Father are one? Okay, John chapter 10. He would have had to say no. He would have had to say they are two, which means that Jesus is not God he is Lord, he is uh, revered, he was honored, or whatever. He is our Savior, but he's not God, okay? And as soon as he said that, then they should have said, well, you're in disagreement with the Bible. We can't allow you to be called, be called a Christian anymore. And instead of condemning him, you know, they, they should have just said that, just like we do today, Jehovah's Witnesses aren't Christian. Mormons aren't Christian, and here's why because they violate one of the five fundamental things that the Bible says about having to believe in Jesus Christ. Instead, what happened in that council is that they formed a creed that's very eloquent, it's very nice, but most Christians don't have the, vague, the, the vaguest clue of what it means. What they did was they bumped the Trinity or at least the father-son relationship and both being God, uh, one God in two persons at least, uh, they bumped that into the non-negotiable. If you don't believe this, then you're condemned. And nowhere, and I, I went through this with a lot of people, no one was able to show me any verses in the Bible anywhere that say that it is absolutely essential and necessary and you can't call yourself a Christian if you don't believe in the Trinity. I had Christians who were throwing the virgin birth at me, saying that that is an absolute non-negotiable truth that if somebody doesn't believe that, then they are not a Christian. So my question is, what do you think about that? What do you think about the fact that the going by the Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed, Nicene Creed, Athanasian Creed, allows the Seventh-day Adventist, the Catholic Church, the Orthodox Church, from joining our ministerial associations and calling themselves Christians and being a legitimate denomination or other groups that teach salvation by works. 
And the other question I have about if you're going to go to the creeds, what justification do we really have as Protestants for the creed for rejecting the councils after the Reformation? Is it just because we don't agree with those? Well, what about the people who don't agree with the Council of Nicaea? What about the Athanasian Creed? See, Council of Trent, after the Reformation, actually condemned, condemned anybody who believes salvation by works, or by grace alone, through faith alone. They s insisted that you must perform good works, that you must go through the Holy Catholic Church. And then you have Vatican II that kind of lightened the, the thing on, on that. Um, but how many Protestants do you know that have paid any attention to Vatican II or the Council of Trends? None. And so it makes us sound really weird when we say, you've got to go by the creeds. You've got to believe in the creeds. And we point to the creeds. It's like, well, this is what I believe. Well, guess what? I believe in the Word of God. And I want to know what you think about this. What place do the creeds have in the Christian life? I want to hear your comments down below, and I'll be checking back to see what you have to say. And once again, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button, enable notifications, like this video, and share it with others. I want to get a conversation started about this because I think it's really a confusing thing. It's an important thing. We need to be clear on what it is that we believe as a Christian and what it means to be a Christian, what groups should be in, what groups should not be in, and what people should believe in order to call themselves a Christian. And so, until next time, may his power be with you.